I'm not saying no. So, so, I, I, I do understand. Yeah, you understand? Right. Huh? I lived on when I was uh, I lived in Long Beach, 56th Street, around 56 in Chestnut. I think I, had, I think I had a pretty good time, you know, growing up around here. Uh, didn't really run into too many too much trouble. Every kid gets into you know little mm -hmm. things here and there, but I mean uh, it was it was a pretty good uh, experience. It was a pretty good uh, environment. I feel like I mean it's negative it's negative things everywhere. But just the type of mindset, you know, that we all have in the gym, we're not really too influenced mm. by all the negativity. So, with that being said, I was able to kind of grow up in this environment and still turn out okay, and still, uh, you know, become successful. That's pretty much yeah, the prime age, because that's when you know teenage boys start trying to figure out themselves out, and there really is where it's like, uh, like what, what, what path are you going to go on? You know, 14, 15, what path are you going to go on? And uh, like I said, I started boxing at Jack Rabbit when I was 15. Mm -hmm. And before that, uh, I hung out, you know, with some guys that uh, they turned out to be gangbangers now. Mm. Back then, you know, we, were, they, we weren't really gangbangers. Well, you know, I don't gangbang. So back then we weren't really gangbangers, but, you know, we would get into little scraps and little fights. And I mean, for me, it was just, you know, just fighting with the homies or just, you know, having the homies back type of thing like that. Mm -hmm. And um, pretty much when I started boxing, I started. I stopped hanging around. Though I pretty much just spent all my time at the gym. After after school, instead of hanging out, I would just hop on the bus and I'd just go right to the to the to the boxing gym. Um, Ivan used to pretty much, because it was kind of late when I left. So Ivan used to take me home. He would drop me off here every night. So with that being said, it was like I really didn't have time to you know hang out like I used to. And like I said, a lot of the people, those guys now, some are in prison, you know. Um, a lot of those guys that I used to hang out with, you know, are gang bangers in prison. Um, and who knows how I would have turned out if I didn't, you know, sign up for Jack Rabbit, if I didn't have, you know, Ivan, you know, making sure I was in the gym or. But uh, yeah, man, this was the street. This is the house I grew up in. <laughs> this is it, man. I used to run. I used to, uh, I used to run down this street, right? I used to go straight down. I used to make a left on Atlantic, right? Mm -hmm. so after I made a left on Atlantic, I would make another left on Alondra. I used to go all the way down Alondra, and then I'll make another left on Long Beach Boulevard. And I'll cross that bridge, I come all the way back, back down Long Beach Boulevard. And I used to make another left on 56. And I used to run all the way down. That was, that was my nightly run. Mm -hmm. That was my little, I just boom, 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 boom. And that's my nightly run. And, I, and I'm curious to see how I would do that run now compared to how I used to do it when I was younger. Yeah. You know? like I, I, it might be weird to just come here and just, just start park there. and just do a run. You feel me? <laughs> but I want to, I want to run my old, uh, my yeah. old route just yeah, to see, route. you know, you know how how I would do it, and how I would feel, you know, to do it. Yeah. Uh, I do it now. Yeah. Um, back then I didn't have no running apps. You feel me? I used to actually. So the way I used to keep track of my runs uh, back then, I would listen to a, a, a album. Like okay. a full album, you feel me? Mm -hmm. And then I remember, like, okay, when this song popped up, I was in front of the McDonald's. You feel hey, me? Yeah. So I, I, the next day, I'll do the same run. I mean, the same album, right? And then I'll just remember, like, okay, when it, by the time this song came, I was at that McDonald's, mm -hmm. or by the time this song came, the, I was at the McDonald's behind yeah. me. So I know, like, okay, I'm going faster, or yeah. I know, like, okay, I got to speed up the pace. Because I'm not where I was yesterday. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. That's how I used to keep uh, keep in contact or keep the track of, uh, of my runs and shit before I had all the apps and all the technology that they have now. Yeah, Back like then, I was I was I was messing with a uh, Dom Kennedy. Okay. So uh, I remember my senior, pretty much the album of my senior year was uh, "Get Home Safely" by Dom Kennedy. Yeah. So I, I listened. I ran it out a couple times, and I and I and I kept track using that album. Um, whoever I listened to at the time, you know, who dropped the album, uh, whether if it was Meek Mill, Dream Chasers, you know, I listened to his his mixtape, Going to Run, um, 
Yeah, yeah, man. Whoever I was listening to, it wasn't it wasn't really like a specific playlist. Just whoever was hot at the time, dropping the album, dropping the mixtape is what I what I'll play. When yeah. I'm yeah. yeah, I'm putting up to one of my biggest my biggest fans' houses. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Oh, okay, I got my see biggest, a fan. Biggest, see my biggest, biggest fan, fan right here. Look at my biggest fan right here. What's up, man? This one of my biggest fans. Oh, yeah, we know. <laughs> hey, bro, we know. Grab, bro. What's up, man? How you doing, bro? Hey, man. What's you doing on this part of town, bro? Yeah, you feel me? Hey, sometimes I like to get in touch with the people. You know, I know I'm celebrity. <laughs> like people. Hey, man, keep doing what you're doing, man. You're a big trying. inspiration to the hood, man. Oh, yeah, I know it. I know it. I got, I'm out of the park, bro. All right, for sure. I got something for you, too. All right, bet. What you doing is mobbing around, yeah, bro, like that. you own, like you, like you somebody. <laughs> This is not a test. him pretty much nowadays with like Instagram, YouTube and stuff like um our exposure really can be in our hands. You feel me? Really? Like doing stuff like this, we don't have to really rely on, you know, certain people or wait on certain people to put us out there. Mm -hmm. you know, we can start our own podcast, we can make our own promo videos, we can do everything ourselves. And at the end of the day it shows people like when you wanna when you wanna come mess with us, you have to come with that bag because we can do what you can do. You feel me? And more. Exactly, and more. Yeah. Come on, man. How long have we been knowing each other? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Hey, 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 hey. It's an eye. It's an eye. Come on, it's man. Oh, no, he spelled it wrong. Hey, I don't even want it. Take it back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I met Hess in his very own gym. You know, I was, it was like my first week, my Ash's first week in here. You know, we was learning how to, learning how to box a little bit. And I see Hess, I see he got a little skill on him. I was like, hey, he kind of nice. You know what I'm saying? So I introduced myself. I said, what's up, man? What's your name? Da -da -da. We, we, locked, we locked hands and ever since then, you know, that's been my boy. Um, we actually grew up grew up in his very own gym, sparring each other, you know, at, at the time, he, he was around the same height, you know, I sprouted up, <laughs> I sprouted up, now I'm 6'5", towering over him, he, he like to my hip and shit now, but, <laughs> nah, but, um, yeah, we, we, we grew up sparring each other, you know, work, working with each other, helping each other build, you know, the has, has probably gonna tell you a different story, but you know, I used to beat up on him, you know, I was like Mike Tyson to him, you know, he'd always look up to me like, yo, little big bro, what's up, man, teach me, teach me your legs, nah, nah, but every time we work, it was good work, so, um, we, we always been, we always been in this, in this very own gym, just climbing the amateur ranks with, with each other and stuff like that, and we always been, we always, we always were like-minded people, so it was just like our our, uh, our personalities gravitated towards each other. You know, he was he he a, he a dope person hey, for real. What's up? Hey, hey, what's hey. up? My no, North. Stay, hey, stay for the podcast. Uh, nah, 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 stay nah, for the nah, podcast. Nah, nah. Stay for the podcast. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We gonna say this story for the podcast. <laughs> That's off the record. That's off the record. But, uh, yeah, 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 that's, that's, that's out the record. Bro, let me get you, let me get you, let me get you. Yeah. You want to announce it, bro? What are we doing? Bro. If, we, if we put it in the universe, it's, it gotta be official. It's a, it's already official. I've, I've been waiting on you. Ooh. Basically. Okay, exclusive? Okay. Basically. Y'all the first to hear it. You know, we coming out with our own little podcast, you know. Right, you will be able to see, you know, this type of this duo. Okay. Dynamic. This, pers this yeah. personality, you know, in your ear, on your YouTube screen. Children of the trenches. Look, look around. <laughs> look around. Look where we at. Look where we at. The hood. The hood. <laughs> <laughs> but now, nah, bro, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We just come to bring some positive energy to the world. You know, through all this negativity. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Supporting any 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 business out there. You know. Like I support my bro, my boy, Black Dynasty. Black Dynasty, yeah. 
This shit hard, man. This let like go. Yeah. Hey, the, the the next the next the next design will be hard. I was thinking about some uh, two other designs. At least we got badass kids we're going down the alleyways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the next two designs, man. I think uh, I'm, I'm gonna let y'all know them off the and uh, tell me what y'all think. We go uh, we we'll, we'll keep rolling them out. We we'll go keep rolling them out, and we go kind of uh, like I said. Pretty much today, bro, we've been talking about building brands damn near mm -hmm. all day. It seems like oh, every yeah. time it falls in the conversation with damn near everybody that we talk to today, everybody that we deliver to. So um, that's what we're doing. You know, we're not just fighters. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, we're business owners. We're, we're brands. Yeah, you, know? yeah. Yeah, you got to talk about the thing. That. I, we, really, we really want the podcast to just be as natural flowing as possible. Yeah. And just us interacting with each other, interacting with our guests, just talking about, you know, current events that's going on okay. you know, in the world. Because we really noticed that our funniest moments and our best moments were just like, bro, why isn't nobody recording this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, we're, just, we're just at the gym bullshitting. And yeah. We just, and we just we really just want that shit documented and put that okay. on camera just because I feel like, or we both feel like that, um... I mean, that's, it's, it's grade A entertainment. We yeah. need Adrian Broner on the podcast. Adrian oh, Broner, yeah, okay. Adrian Broner I'm going to ask him straight up, like, so you did you really think you beat Manny Pacquiao? That's, <laughs> not, that's the first thing I'm going to say on the fucking podcast. Did you really feel like we're you did even, it for the hood? Because hey, <laughs> we, we in the hood. hood. <laughs> we were just in the fucking hood. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, before we even do the ads, before we even introduce ourselves, I'm going to be like, did Man. you really think... That you beat, man. <laughs> Straight out of the gates. But um, that's man. just one way that we do that we that we plan on, you know, expanding our brand mm -hmm. and um, you know, doing great things outside of boxing. That's just one thing that we have that we have up our sleeves. One thing, many. Yeah. And uh, as you can see, me and Javion, the chemistry that we share, yeah. you know, the personality that we bring is is is, is unmatched. So uh, to have that documented, uh, you know. On the, you know, once it's in the internet, it's forever. It's forever, so yeah. Once we uh, get that on once YouTube, get that. exactly. Yeah. Once we get that on YouTube, on Apple uh, Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, Spotify Podcasts, I think that would be a great entertainment for yeah. you know, all the viewers and all the listeners. So I remember one night, I was probably around like 16 or 17. I was just left like a birthday party for, uh, it was like a little hotel party. And it's actually, it was this street. So as you as you saw, my street is a one way street. So I came down this street and I saw a, a gentleman, and uh, he was walking. You know, and I saw him. I don't like when people honk at me. That's just a pet peeve, dude. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm fucking. You feel me? So I saw him, but I didn't pay him no mind, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going. I'm driving down, and as you can see, there it was. It was like this. There's no parking on my street. No parking in front of my house. All right. So I'm going down, you know, I just drive down. And um, right here, this alleyway, I don't have a backyard. So where that where that gate is, I don't know if you can see. Mm -hmm. So where that gate is, that's pretty much, the key. that can lead you to the entrance to my house. Okay. You know? So with that being said, it was parking right here. It was parking right there. And uh, I had to park somewhere around here, right? I had to park somewhere around this street. All right, so let's say I park right here where this great truck or this great car mm -hmm. is. And um, I sat in my car. I uh, probably sent a few text messages out. And then I uh, I left. I uh, I left back and I went to, uh, you know, walk home. Mm -hmm. And as I walked home, as I'm, I'm turning, I'm coming down, I make that left. As I make that left, I see the... Uh, the guy that I just that I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. I see him, and um, he's probably where the the green gate is. As I'm turning into, uh, as I'm turning into, you know, okay, to get yeah. to my house, yeah. So I, I turn into the alley, and then now we're just, you know, we're in the alley, and he and he he he's ruck, he's walking kind of drunkly, you know, like he, mm -hmm. he's drunk. He's walking like he's drunk. And uh, in my head, it's like, okay, if, if you try anything, you feel me? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do what I was trained to do, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, he's walking like he's drunk, and he's like, hey, what's up, bro? You know, everything's cool. I'm like, hey, what's up? You know, how you doing? He's like, nothing, man. Like, you know, how are you? I'm like, all right, it's cool. He's like, I'm good, or I said I'm something. And then um, I guess it was my mistake for letting him get too close. But uh, he drew down on me, took out a gun. And, uh, and he pointed at me, he told me, like, you know, give me all your stuff. And, and mind you, 
I'm in the alley right now. My house is right here. You feel me? Mm -hmm. It literally happened right here, bro. Mm -hmm. The house is right here. He drew down, you know, told me, give me all your, all your stuff and stuff. And of course, you know, in your head, you're thinking like, what should you do? Should I try to, you know, grab the gun? You know, should I try to sock the dude? Should I try to, uh, you know, run? Or should I just, you know, give it up or whatever? And uh, pretty much, I figured, you know, my future, my career, and where and where I was going in life, it was worth a lot more than you know a few dollars mm -hmm. in a cell phone. So I pretty much just you know I gave him I gave him what he asked for. But I mean those type of things, you know, growing up, you know, in the environment, you go you go run into different different scenarios, run into different different problems, and I think it's really all about you know how you how you how you deal with them, how you you know react to them. And I didn't react too well. I mean, I, I called some of the homies that I, that I, some people that I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, I asked them like, "Hey, man, grab a gun, grab this, grab that." You know, and luckily they told me like, "Oh no, bro, like you know, it's cool." Blah 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 blah. They didn't do what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say if they did, you know, I probably wouldn't be here with you today because, mind you, he was on foot. He was on foot, and I had a car. So I'm pretty sure I could have caught up to him if I would have got my hands on, you know, something like he had, you know, if I would have, if I would have even the playing field, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I would have caught up to him and I probably either would be dead, I'd be in jail, I probably wouldn't be here, you know, uh, talking to you today. But it, I mean, you go run into trouble, you go run into, you know, certain things and uh, especially living in this environment, I just think it's all about how you react to him. And uh, yeah, man, you can grow from it. times where so in Long Beach a lot of the Hispanic gangs and a lot of the black gangs they go at it you know yeah. all the time and there's times where a Hispanic will kill a black person just for being black mm -hmm. or a black will you know try to kill a Hispanic just for being a Hispanic mm -hmm. when it is hot like that yeah and it was around one of those times so realistically if he wanted to and of course the guy was a you know gangbanger or whatever yeah. if he wanted to he could he could have just shot me then and there you know mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, yeah, looking back, man, I'm grateful nothing happened. I'm grateful only, and that's the thing. It wasn't even like, he, he like I said, he took like a phone or some shit. And it wasn't even like an iPhone or nothing. It was mm -hmm. just like some bullshit. It was flip it was, phones back then. Man, day. it was bad, dude. It was <laughs> called a tap. <laughs> Bro, my phone was called a tap, dude. Uh, and it was like a metro type of thing. And uh, You can have that. You feel me? Yeah. I'm not even worried about that. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. Man, looking back, I am grateful that uh, that nothing happened. I'm grateful that I was able to, you know, lead that situation uninjured. And um, I mean, it taught me everything is a, is a learning lesson because I don't know if you noticed, but I, I watch over my shoulder a lot, a lot more yeah. now. Yeah. But not, obviously, I wasn't really watching over my shoulder then, but and now I watch over my shoulder a lot more. Jordan, class of what? Class of 2014. Hey. Yeah. How are you in high school, bro? How are you with your studies? Oh man, I uh, that's the thing. Oh, shit, shoot, excuse me, I'm dropping. There you go. That's the thing. I uh, I thought I was gonna be well, shit. I'm a professional. I, I knew I was a professional fighter, so mm. I really didn't take high school too serious. I mean. And my teacher used to tell me, like, well, you know, you need a plan B. You know, what if boxing doesn't work out, you need a plan B. 
And I thought I was smart. I'd tell them like, oh, well, if you have time to think about plan B, you're not focused enough on plan A. Ooh. You know I mean? So I thought I was a smart, a smart athlete. But uh, um. yeah, in high school, I, I could have been better. You know, I could have, I could have took it a lot more serious, but I just knew that I, uh, that I wanted to be a fighter. So I didn't. But I mean, I would suggest, you know, for anybody out there, you know, uh, student athletes, the, the, the books are just as important as, you know, the athletics, you know, because when all the athletes are done, same stuff we've been talking about, you know, this whole day, when everything is said and done, that degree will stick with you and, and whatever you do in the athletics or whatever you do in school, that's what you're going to do. Once I moved with my dad, I changed. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Hmm. But she said once I moved out to Long Beach, I changed. And uh, I don't think so, you know? I don't um, think so. Like I was saying, I was going to Long Beach, Jordan. Mm -hmm. And like I mentioned earlier, all my friends were out in Long Beach, you know? So mm -hmm. like around here, I didn't, I don't, I don't really know anybody. Or I didn't mm -hmm. really know anybody out in Compton. I never went to school in Compton, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't really get the, uh, the opportunity to make friends as easy as I did in Long Beach. Oh, yeah, okay. So I mean, just imagine, you know, it's after after school, all your friends are still hanging out, and it's like, well, I gotta go all the way back home to Compton. You know, I wanted to hang out with my friends too, and I wanted to, you know. So I that's I think I asked her, you know, can I move with my dad out in Long Beach? And uh, of course, she allowed it, and uh, it all worked out for the best because I don't know if I even told you this, but so I found out about the Jack Rabbit Gym mm -hmm. because somebody at Long Beach Jordan went there. Oh, okay. And um, he told me about it, and then I went and signed up, and then, you know, now we're here. So everything uh, happened for a reason. Everything worked out how it was supposed to work out. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, that was that was my idea. I asked her to uh, to take me. Or can I move with my dad just because I had friends out in Long Beach and I wanted to hang out? And mm -hmm. that's where the change began. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, when he moved out with that, you know, you know, it wasn't a big deal. It made sense to me. He was closer to the school and all that. That's fine. Mm -hmm. And when he would come back to visit, it's like I saw it. He was just becoming a man each and every visit. And it's just like, where, where's little AJ? Hey. <laughs> but um, he's a good kid. You mm. know, he really is. I call him my little chocolate drop. <laughs> <laughs> I put down some shirts. Chocolate, <laughs> chocolate drop, man. We give, drop, give mom 25%. Only, only, only the females can buy the chocolate drop shirts. Yeah, we're going to do it you like know. that. I'm very yeah. proud of him. Uh, he could be doing uh, tons of other things that's not, you know, beneficial to him or positive. So I'm proud. Mm -hmm. First and first, uh, foremost, I'm just concerned about his safety and mm -hmm. health. But if he's happy, then I'm happy. You know, but I like the fact that he has guys up there he can look up to and like mentoring him in a positive way. So, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, I have one picture yeah. of him somewhere. Bring in the him vault. up. I don't know where it's at right now. Mm -hmm. I can't say, but he has it somewhere on his uh social media yeah, he's has he had little boxing gloves and at the time i never thought of you know him being a boxer i just thought okay let's just try this uh -huh. um and then like i said he tried to get him into the football that didn't do anything i think he did you ever do basketball baseball mm -mm. oh i did softball 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 okay. that what there wasn't a connection there mm. um but the fact that he's the baby and the only boy he was spoiled to this day he's still spoiled <laughs> yeah <laughs> <He's a no. laughs> But he was a, a happy kid. Now, when it came down to socializing with other kids, he was kind of like to himself, a little reserved at times. Hmm. I don't know if you want to see. Let's check I it out. I don't know if you can catch it. Though. Your sisters? Oh, yeah, my sisters, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, um, you know, so he was one of my happiest babies, I would say. He was, you know, a joy to have around. Like I say, I was, we were best friends up until a certain point. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> we we're cool. We just like you know, he don't let me baby him, and that's fine. Oh, he's still, <laughs> I he's was still one of... I can baby up. Oh, okay. <laughs> what about what about Anthony having kids one day? Oh, you looking forward to that? I, I, yes, and, you know when the time is right. I, I, I you know, I I have my kids young, mm -hmm. so I would rather my kids wait when you know until the time is right you know enjoy their youthfulness so mm -hmm. to speak um mm -hmm. so yeah but i embrace it when, when the time is right yeah absolutely or drop an exclusive no i'm just kidding yeah, <laughs> no, i'm just kidding I'm just <laughs> hey, hey, see we right here so i was about to drop the, you see i was speaking like all right what i was saying so Tony's pregnant we wanted to get your reaction Tony's smarter than yeah. she's smarter but i'm not <laughs> We wanted to get your no, reaction. I just want you to know, like, I really am proud of you. And, of course, like, 
us growing up, we never know what our destiny is going to be. We never know what we're going to become. And I just feel like the man that you are, you're really like, you're confident and you know who you are and you know what you strive for. And I just really find that just amazing because even like you say, like how you, you often say, like, you know, you can't be comfortable. You're, it's going to be things that makes you uncomfortable. And I like how you go for that and you push through that. And I feel like you can strive for something, you get it. If you fall off, if something happens, you're going to get back up and do it. And you're going to make sure you reach all your goals. And I think that's amazing. Thank you. No, nah, man, she, she said I'm not affectionate, but I think I'm affectionate. I, I love my mom to death. Uh, I show it every time I, I really get a chance to, but it's just like, you know, in my schedule, I, we rarely run into each other. Usually when I'm coming home, she's still at work, and when she's when I'm leaving from work, you know, she still sleeps, so we rarely run into each other. But, um, yeah, man, I love my mom to death, and uh, hopefully when I do get enough money to, you know, retire her, and I get enough money to, you know, box full-time and everything like that, then I can show her all the affection she may need. I probably could bring this to you right now. I needed that large black one. That large black one, nice though. <laughs> I know, bro, but uh, shit, this all I got on me right now. I'll be sold out. I'm gonna have to get you on the next batch. When you gonna get your next one? Uh, I don't know, bro. Uh, I'm thinking about uh, a few more designs. And that's the thing, too. I, I wanted to keep everything as unique as possible. So I, I was only thinking of like printing out, printing out certain things once. You feel me? And, uh, yeah, but I mean, shit, this all I got right now, bro, is the law. I just sold out. I literally just sold out of my last white. One of the most important things that you can do, I mean, um, the belts, the championships, the legacies, um, that's all great. That's all fine. That's going to get you the big bucks. But at the end of the day, you can't pass a championship to your son. You can't pass mm -hmm. a legacy to your family. But you can, you know, leave a brand for your family to uh, to eat off of. You can leave, you know, businesses and things like that. So I feel like building your brand outside of boxing is just as important as what you do inside the sport of boxing. I mean, boxing is only going to last you up to what, you know, what they say, like you hit your prime at fucking like 33 or yeah, some yeah. shit. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, boxing is not going to be forever, but that brand for sure could be forever. And then you could, you could, you could support your family forever mm -hmm. off of whatever brand you decide to build. Yeah. For sure. I wouldn't be in the sport if I didn't want to be the best at it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I do have the mindset of what I'm going to do outside of boxing, what I'm going to do after boxing, and how am I going to support my family, you know, like build that generational wealth mm -hmm. when all this is over with, you know? Yeah. And um, that's really just on my mind. That's, and it, 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 it motivates you more. It motivates you more in the sport because you're, you're fighting for, you know, you're fighting for something. Like I said before, you know, if you're hustling for your first name, you're selfish. You got to hustle for your last name. So mm -hmm. that's what we do all this for. We do all, do all this for our last name. We do all this for our family. We do all this to, you know, support our great, great, great grandchildren, not even our grandchildren. I'm hustling for my great, 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 great grandchildren. So I'm trying to leave that generation well. I think uh, well, what I did was I listened to podcasts. I listened to a lot of podcasts when um, I'm at work and stuff. Um, I read a book called Rich, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And yeah. That pretty much teaches you the difference between assets and liabilities. And um, just pick a niche, you know, pick something that you like and just stick with it. You know, me personally, like I, I do stocks a little bit, but my main niche, what I really study the most is real estate. And that's where the whole Hess Invest came about. I, I, I could tell you about that when we're going to live with other stories. But the whole Hess Invest came about because I joined like a real estate club. Okay. And um, I pretty much tried to change my image just from like a regular social uh, Instagram, you know, to kind of like a real estate niche type of Instagram. And um, that's where that uh, whole thing came about. But yeah, I'll say, you know, listen to podcasts. First thing you got to do is just get educated. Read books, listen to podcasts, find what you want to do, whether it's stocks, real estate, start a business, angel investing. There's so many things you could do. And um, just stick with it, you know, and uh, keep investing. <laughs> but uh, what's crazy is I stopped boxing. So the first time I stopped boxing, right? So mm -hmm. Ivan asked me, like, all right, well, you know what you going to do? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to start a Let me sell shirts. You know? That ended up not working out. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's crazy now that I'm pretty much selling shirts, but I'm using boxing. Yeah. I'm boxing to do it. You know, it's, it's crazy. It's just funny how things, uh, how things, things work, work out. out. Yeah, for sure. So I lived in Carson. Um, I went to elementary school and middle school in Carson. And, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I learned a lot out here. You know, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't too rough. You know, it's not as rough as the first one in Chicago. But, yeah. Jordan. 
Mm. My dad lived in Long Beach. So uh, I went ahead and moved with him just so I could be closer. Closer to the school, closer to my, you know, the friends and people that I met out there and stuff like that, you know. This is actually, uh, right here, it's crazy to be fast. This is actually my uh, elementary school. Okay. People elementary. I got in a couple fights. Okay. A couple fights, you know, here. Um, it was just... It was just, I don't, I don't think that, you know, you can't just tell, like, you know, uh, eight-year-old kid to sit, sit down and don't talk. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't think that was the best way for, for kids. I played football. football okay. yeah, I played football uh, when, I was, when I was a kid. And that was about it. I'm going to play from football. No, I took football, football for a couple of years. I think mm -hmm. it's the street. I took football off for a couple of years, and then I went, uh, I went to boxing. Wait, you were like six, six years ago? Yeah. Took his lunch money. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he didn't want to. He, he didn't. Was going, he was. He was looking uh, to go to the ice cream truck. And, uh, <laughs> ran up on him quick. You know. Yeah. yeah Scariest day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Something they don't know. <laughs> it's the guy right here, man. I think everybody know that. Yeah. But um, hardest worker I know. Okay. Out of everybody, and I work pretty fucking hard, my damn <laughs> self. This motherfucker work hard. <laughs> Motherfucker be running all fucking day. Yeah. All damn day, man. I don't never get nervous, man. I mean, motherfucker always working. Always mm -hmm. working hard. So it's like, I know he's prepared no matter what. Mm -hmm. you know, he always ready. Yeah. Motherfucker walk around. He walk around the street, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Even when he jogging. Uh -huh. He jogging. I'll be running. <laughs> mm. Like, damn, nigga. Like, <laughs> <laughs> relax, dude. <laughs> Church. It's actually one day uh. my girl set up like a little uh, surprise birthday party for me. Uh -huh. right? And um, I come in long day at work. I just come in off of work and then uh pretty much everybody go like, oh surprise, surprise, you feel me? So I'm like, oh surprise. And then I look to my left, and this dude is pretty much damn near like this close to me. Like he got up on me, you feel me? Uh -huh. and I didn't expect him to be that close. I almost dropped him. Yeah, <laughs> it's the rich homie too. No, yeah, yeah. It's the rich homie. Get him, get him, yeah, get him, 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 Hey, AJ got me these for my 20th birthday. A lot of y'all don't know. I was holding this one. <laughs> so if you in, so you in Compton, uh, this on the record, off the record. There you go. If you in Compton, it's my boy Dom. Hey, okay. Man, we met uh in middle school. <laughs> oh, let me tell y'all. <laughs> <laughs> He called me a weirdo. <laughs> Dude, favorite story. Yeah, favorite my go -to. fucking story. No. He was practicing on the way on the freeway and shit, probably. Oh, I remember that time he called me a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to let him know about that. Oh, I got what told him a story. Oh, mm -hmm. shit. Well, he gonna ask you questions, but I was just introduce You can tell him the weirdest story. Oh, okay. I'm gonna uh, debunk it. Man, <laughs> man, this guy go way back. You know, we met in sixth grade we became friends in the seventh grade though because in sixth grade i guess i was weird uh <laughs> in the seventh grade you know things are going a little a little bit more smooth uh <laughs> we became class clowns and uh hit it off ever since there was a uh, one time where uh we stopped talking and sometime in high school and like a long just time went by and my number never changed and i blame him for never hitting me up but i used to like pull up to his house because he had okay. moved uh but he said like you know his number never changed so i guess it was both of our fault okay. but uh this was like three years four years went by and then out of the blue one day 
He just pulled up in his big ass Ford F-150, locked the neighbor's driveway, <laughs> like parked it right in the neighbor's driveway. He just came right on in and uh, yeah, we got pressed at like two in the morning for that, but. She's knocking on the door, boom, 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 boom. We were like, who the fuck is knocking like that? It's like two in the morning. And then we go to the door, she's like, um, can I get in my driveway? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, my bad. But no, I was just excited to see him, man. Cause, yeah. uh, Back like we never left. Yeah, that was my boy, and that's the, that's how you know real friendship. It doesn't matter how long you know the time goes. Mm -hmm. Unless you guys don't talk or something, whenever you guys do rekindle, and it's like nothing changed. You know, you just hop right back into the friendship. That's it's how you it. know it's uh, it's, it's real it's friends, it. for sure. Yeah, yeah. And I have that with uh, pretty much every everybody you spoke to today. That's what I have. Like how he said, yeah. you know, I'd be kind of busy. Yeah, I don't see AJ that much. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Probably what like my fifth time seeing him all damn year. All damn year. The business man. Yeah. You're not a business man. I'm a business, a business man. man. Yeah. I don't understand. Building bread. I keep talking. Yeah, building bread. I've been planning it. this. <laughs> nah, yeah. nah, nah. But um, yeah, man. So I be I be kind of busy sometimes. But when we do link up, man, it's like nothing, uh, nothing, nothing ever changes. Like I, like I, like I wasn't gone. Yeah. Sure. That's okay. But I got something. Yeah. AJ used to jerk in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you? AJ used to jerk in middle school. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> We got the black, the white, we got the sleep track. Right? I'm about to wear these for a month straight. Not your size. And that's the world. And that's the world, bro. And that's the world. That's how we get down. Black yeah, dynasty, yeah, yeah. the original. Skull and all. There you go. <laughs> this, is, this is medium, medium, this, or extra medium? This is me. This is large, right? This is how the largest large, right? Yeah, man. My friends, uh, my friends are very supportive. I'm really appreciative to have them uh, in my corner, just because uh, I know how things can get when you're, you know, you're pretty busy and you don't get to hang out. A lot of people get kind of offended when you turn down plans, and I'm just lucky enough to have people in my corner that kind of understand, you know, what I'm going through and what I'm trying to do, and uh, support me every step of the way. So yeah, man, I appreciate all my friends. If you were in the uh, interviews, if you were in the interviews, man, just know I appreciate y'all and I love y'all for sure. to land the panel. So I'm we pretty much are like our scrap panels. I think these are gonna be thrown away. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off some of these breakers yeah. that I can uh, land into the panel. company I've been here for about two years um, I like it um, pretty much like I said I was with another company I was with another company for my first year it didn't really didn't really work out after mm -hmm. that I kind of bounced around a little bit mm -hmm. until I found this company and uh, I like it here you know everybody's pretty cool uh, I learned a lot a lot with uh, Mike the foreman that I introduced you mm -hmm. he taught me a lot uh, help me a lot. Even on like some side jobs, I have a side job and I won't know what the fuck I'm, <laughs> what the fuck is going on, you know? Yeah. And I give him a call and he'll uh, he'll pretty much help me walk him through it, you know? Yeah. This is mostly a, a male dominated, uh, you know, company. What do people say when they hear that you're a boxer? Uh, I think everybody's pretty much been excited. Like they pretty much, um, They've been real supportive and they're more so kind of just like I think they're just kind of really concerned on the weight thing. I okay. think everything is big on the weight just because you know if you're flushing, 
you know, my, pretty much we eat kind of not the healthiest. Yeah. Know? So when I'm walking around talking about I have to lose weight, they're like, well, why the hell you got to lose weight? Are you already <laughs> skinny enough, you know? Yeah. So uh, I think that's pretty much the main question that I get is just like the weight thing. But for mm -hmm. the most part, everybody in the company has been uh, real supportive. And even when I was when I fought September 29th, mm -hmm. they spent they sent like a vast company email out mm -hmm. with the flyer with the hey. link the link to the stream. That's what's up. They sent the whole email out, and um, yeah, I was surprised. Even people like in the office, people that I really don't know it that well, mm -hmm. they tuned in and they watched the fight. And I went back to uh, I went back to uh, actually watch the stream. And then I fucking uh, I saw some of these guys like in the comments and stuff talking shit. <laughs> so I mean it was, it was real cool. It's and, all uh, love. It's all love. Yeah. yeah. They've been uh, they've been real supportive for sure. Yeah. So this is my project for today. For sure. I'm gonna be landing this panel. This panel pretty much goes out to some of the um the other offices and majority of this is like uh receptacles and uh things like that, you know, just power. We don't have no lights in this panel in particular. So that's why I brought these circuit breakers because I don't have enough circuit breakers. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna pretty much pop these in, you know. That's what's boom, up. Boom, boom, boom. Hey. And, uh, and that'll be that. Yeah, I'll probably pull up around five, uh, 4 30. Uh huh. Or probably 4 40, 4 50 if I'm kind of running late. I try to get here early. But um, we clock in, supposed to be inside here at 5. Okay, and then you get up around 1 or 2 and then off to the gym, right? Yeah, I get off at 1 30. Then I get to the uh, go right to the gym. Maybe like probably an hour to get to the gym, so I might. You know, get to the gym around 2 30. And uh, Trevor, Ivan, they'll be there. They're there uh, waiting on me. Pretty much. I pretty much, uh, I pretty much come when all the other guys are like finishing up. Yeah. So, uh, they kind of just get done with the training. And then, they, and then there's me, you know, ready for another <laughs> one. So. Yeah. Those guys are really working hard, and I appreciate them kind of accommodating me to their schedule. You yeah. know, they don't really have to. Yeah. But that also just shows that also just shows like the belief mm -hmm. that they have in me because yeah. you're not somebody's not going to pretty much somebody's not going to move their schedule around or adjust their schedule to accommodate mm -hmm. you know somebody they don't believe in. You yeah. Know? So it kind of makes me appreciate. It makes me want to work harder it makes me want to you know yeah just because those guys are you know taking time out of their schedule to uh make sure that i uh you get your work in yeah get your work in, exactly yeah. it can get uh pretty complicated um me personally mm -hmm. i went to like a little seven month program okay so i mean I, I did pretty good in the school, mm -hmm. so it wasn't really, no, nah, it was hard, it was hard, mm -hmm. but I mean, like, just like anything, you know, you put your time in, you know, uh, put your time in, eventually you'll pick it up. Mm -hmm. I just think that, like, the most important thing in just a let's go, just like, if anybody wants to be, like, in construction or just, or fucking in life, period. Mm -hmm. You're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna fuck up, you know, yeah. there's been countless times. Like when you, you can talk to my I fucked up this job site, you know? <laughs> You're gonna fuck up, yeah. but I feel like the main thing is not making the same mistake more than once. Yeah. Like if you fuck up once and like learn from that mistake, 
and you know that's that's that and that, that can be related to boxing too yeah if i if i throw a punch and get hit with a counter punch you know i have to pretty much realize what the hell i did wrong mm -hmm. so i won't get hit with that same counter punch again you know so i won't make that same mistake again yeah and uh, that can be related like i said to electrical work boxing life yep, yep. you're gonna make mistakes you're gonna fuck up don't you know get yourself too down but when you do make when you do make that mistake, learn from it and make sure you don't make the same mistake. Yeah. I'll say just try a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't really know like exactly what you want to do, fuck it, try everything, especially when you're young, like you, you have nothing but time. You know, try different things. Um, people hanging out with the wrong crowd, if it's not beneficial, it's artificial. If they're not mm. helping you, pretty much helping you succeed in life or helping you, you know, progress, I mean, you got to get them up out of there, you know, like don't get me wrong. You got your friends, you got your homies, but you might have to uh, love some people at a distance. Yeah. You know, and mm -hmm. um, I mean, yeah, but pretty much just try everything, try anything. I got into electrical pretty much because, all right, so after I stopped boxing, mm -hmm. it was like, okay, what the, well, what the fuck are you gonna do with your life? You know, I yeah. literally just Google electrician salary. Okay. And I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, mm -hmm. and then like probably the next couple months I was in school. I just tried it. I wasn't, I didn't know I was going to like it, you know. Mm -hmm. I ended up liking it, but I just put myself out there and I just tried it. Mm. And um, yeah, that's what I would suggest. I would suggest if you don't know what you want to do exactly with your life, especially while you're young, just try a lot of different things. And um, eventually something's going to, something's going to click. You know? Something's going to click. Something's going to fit. Something's like, going to fit. Like a glove. Right now we're going to land all our ground wires. We're going to land our ground wires first on this side then we're going to land our neutrals on this side and then this is where actually our power is going to go yeah. right down here so that's what i'm doing right now i'm just trying to get this as organized and as neat as possible yeah. i'm going to use these things i don't know if you can see but i'm, I'm going to throw like a zip tie in here mm -hmm. or probably this one whatever one and i'm going to zip tie that like that boom okay, and then i'm going to bring it down i think i have one more or i'm probably going to put one more right there I'm gonna come down and then I'm gonna land all my ground my ground wires right up in here. Yeah, hey, there you go. Yes, sir. So, I mean, it's kind of tedious, you know, but you gotta take your time, make sure it's fuck, make sure it's neat. You know, yeah. you won't really go far, only hustling for yourself, because I feel like when you have a reason to do something, when you have a why, you can be way more motivated than you just like, oh, I want a new band, you know, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna grind out, grind out, grind out. And then what? You got that business and then you're done. You feel me? Yeah. But when you're talking about building generational wealth, it's for generations. So mm -hmm. the grind never stops. You know, yeah. I could be I could be way more motivated actually, you know, putting in work for my family than just saying that I wanna put in work for myself. Yeah. You know, for sure. I mean shit. Waking up at three thirty. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Waking up at 3.30, working eight hours, right after uh, work, go to the gym for like another three hours. After the gym, we have like a team run. Mm -hmm. So we have a team run at like eight o'clock, eight, nine o'clock. Okay. So a lot of the times I'm going to bed at like 11. I'm going to bed, you know, I'm going to bed late. Like mm -hmm. I said, I wake up at 3.30. So um, the grind is real right now, man. Yeah. The grind is real, real. And that's gonna pay off for me. It's gonna pay off for all of us for sure. And I want it bad. If I didn't want it bad, I wouldn't be wasting my time. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll go home and take a nap after mm -hmm. work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lord knows I'll be wanting to sometimes. You know, sometimes I'm tired. I want to go home. It's like, man, fuck, I'm going to just go home and take a nap, go to the gym. Mm -hmm. But you know, once you get into that bed, it's hard to get up. Yeah. So I say, fuck it. And I just, uh, I just go out, man. Just keep, just stay on it. Stay on the path. I find balance uh, in my weekends. Yeah. So pretty much, like I said, my weeks are kind of really, uh, really hectic but i'm um, on the weekends you know i might work out saturday i relax sunday and um a lot of the balance just comes from you know your peers you know a lot of a lot of my peers keep me grounded my family you know some of my coworkers that i actually talk to on a regular basis they keep me grounded you know and um keep me focused at the same time so i think that's where i find my balance i find my balance in relaxing on the weekends and i find my balance in uh and just, you know, chopping it up with uh, some of my loved ones. Hey. Yeah.
motivates me, trying to change my lifestyle to be more healthy. Hey. I respect them, man. I respect them a lot. It's definitely an honor. Some of us have the potential to succeed in this trade mm. and go far, and uh, he's definitely one of them. Hey. It makes my job a lot easier to know you can trust somebody. I mean, I can walk off this job, and he knows what he's doing. So mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely a pleasure to have him here. He's always been funny just since day one, though. Hey. Always been a funny dude. Mm -hmm. Always making me crack up. It's been an honor to work for Anthony, man. Uh, he shows a lot of dedication. Every time he messes up on something, he likes to go back and fix it. He wants everything to be perfect. Hey. And, uh, you know, he has a big impact on this job. and. He, he brings a lot of like energy to people and stuff like yeah. that, you know what I mean? It's cool because, you know, I thought about I thought about boxing before, but yeah. I have that bad wrist, <laughs> you know, so I never never really did it. So, you know, knowing that, you know, he's boxing, he's doing it big, trying to do it big. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's that's cool. Uh, I, I was very, uh, I was impressed. I was like, wow, what? I, I never expected it, you know what I mean? And, you know, and then when I seen him fighting TJ and stuff like that, you know, he showed a lot of... Uh, prosperity and everything. And Do you guys ever ask, hey, y'all teach me how to throw a punch, throw me how to... Yeah, all yeah? the time, you yeah. know. Sometimes I'll, I'll be in the corner just shadow boxing, you know, <laughs> just by myself. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, we, we, he taught us a little bit of things, a little bit okay. of moves and stuff. So yeah, it's pretty cool. It's great, you know, you, it's always good to have um, definitely a second path. You yeah. know, I'm pretty sure he's going to succeed big and he's going to take that route. He's a great fighter. So, I mean, he, he's always staying busy, and that's what I actually like about him. He's always yeah. uh, on it, never yeah. loses time, which yeah. is priceless. You know, Anthony, uh, whatever, wherever this journey takes you, I just hope you give it your all and uh, put 110% in it. You know, never give up. But what, uh, what, I really, what I really would like for all of us to do, just on a, on a financial sense, I would really just like for us to, uh, whatever money we make from boxing, just throw it all in investments. Invest every penny that we make from boxing and just live off of those investments. Because if you live off those investments, you will never go broke. You will never run out of the money. You know? mm -hmm. Those brands, those businesses will always stand. And uh, whatever thing you want, if JV, I want a Bugatti, I want a brand new house, you know, have our investments pay for it. You know, exactly. Don't use, well, well I, I would like for us not because these are all men, these are all. You know they're gonna do what they want to do with their money. Yeah. You know? But I would like it if we all just didn't, you know, live off of our earned income. Yeah. Invest our earned income, and then live off the investments. And I think that's the key to financial freedom and financial wealth. Because there's people with millions of dollars, mm -hmm. they got millions of dollars of debt, and they're not financially free. Yeah. I mean, just because you're a millionaire don't mean you're financially free. Mm -hmm. I could have. I mean, Kanye went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. You feel me? You can have $10 million and $9 million. You can have $10 million and you can have $11 million of debt. What is that? You feel me? You're not, you're not financially free. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what I would like for my brothers. That's what I would like for uh, for us to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I can only just share, you know, I can only just say, you know, I think we should do that, I think we should do that. But at the end of the day, it's in their hands. Javion wants to be like me, so he's most likely going to follow my footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in mean, no, bro, Javion. Like, he, bro, bro, one time, you know, Javion 6'5". One time he came up to me, he was like, man, I just wish I was short. Hmm. I just wish I was short. You hear this I, I, guy? I <laughs> Never, ever. <bro. laughs> I said, well, you know, Jeffy, everybody wasn't blessed. Being tall come with yeah. too many perks, man. <laughs> <laughs> he came to my day, he said, man, I just I was, I was short with a ball fade. I used to have a ball fade. Okay. Short with a ball Boosie fade. Boosie fade, just... to, be, to be exact. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. But um, that's what I would like. That's what I think would be best for us. And, uh, we just got to, you know, do right with our money. Mm -hmm. Pretty much teach people from like you know how to not make those mistakes, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. because I guarantee you, once we're up, you know, at the at the pinnacle of boxing, people are gonna go watch. They're gonna be watching these video videos. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be kids that's gonna go back to watch these videos. So instead of what the usual you know influences in entertainment is telling them to do, the usual influences in entertainment telling them, oh, I, I bought this chain, I got a brand new car, I got this, I got that. We're Material telling them like, yo, relax, you feel me, invest that money, you go, whatever you want in life, you could get it, you know, be patient, but you got to be smart at the same time, you feel me, jewelry is not going to add to your wealth, a brand new car is not going to add to your wealth, real estate, a house could add to your wealth, but if you, if you got to do it smart, you got to, you mm -hmm. know, different strategies and stuff, but, um, yeah, man, that's, 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 that's the, the message that I would like to, you know, give out and, uh, 
whatever message Javion would like to give out, that's his message. Sincere want to give out, that's his message. Ashley, whatever message he want to give out, that's his message. But we're here to, you know, teach the youth and guide the youth. We're not here to, you know, to have the same cycle continue. You know, mm -hmm. we're trying to do things different here. Yeah. Bring yeah. scholars and champions. And that's why he's a finesse. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> has nothing to do with his boxing ability. <laughs> <laughs>
hard work and dedication. You know, hard work makes easy work, and that's the motto here at the level. You know, it's you know, only the strong survive here. You know, you, you go through blood, sweat, and tears, literally. Five to 1.30 p.m. Catch me at work from 2.30 to around 5, 5.30. You can catch me here, you know, working hard, working out, goofing off with Jevion, you feel me, clowning with Ash and the Sincere. We'll be getting that hard work done at the same time. And uh, yeah, man, that's pretty much, that's my, my daily life. Work, gym, home, there you have it. If I had to give a message out, if I had to tell anybody anything, I'll say invest your money wisely. Don't make bad decisions and keep finessing. Sure. I'm Anthony Finesse Hess, and this has been your introduction to my daily life.